well, it's kind of raining or, uh, you know, you know when the, it rains and there's lots of trees and then the wind blows and it falls off the trees and it's like, is it still raining or is it just falling off the trees? It's sort of like that. Only it's probably just going to start raining more. Anyway, I did want to um, wrap up the uh, Guinevere Turner uh, book memoir because uh, I said I was going to uh, look into um, Mel Lyman a little bit more and I know that all my uh, viewers have probably been sitting by their phones uh, regularly waiting for a prompt from YouTube that says uh, foregone books or uh, tickled to death books or whatever I'm going to call it <clears throat> has made another video and uh, I want to put you all at peace and tell you that I'm back and uh, I'm wrap up the stuff about Mel Lyman and the Fort uh, Hill community and because I've been reading about it for the past uh, few days since I finished the book and did the video about uh, Guinevere Turner's memoir, When the World Didn't End. So um, a lot of information about Mel Lyman, uh, which is not really collected anywhere else. There's not really a lot of videos about him uh, from like the cult to watch people or anything like that. But um, there is a site um, that was created by a guy named, a man named Steve Terrell. And Steve Trussell, I'm about to say. 20. Trussell. And uh, he collected uh, just a whole lot of stuff uh, tracking Mel Lyman from the uh, folky days, uh, you know, early in 19, uh, 1963. He knew him way back in 63 and he said you know he hasn't hadn't seen him since 67 which is uh well it's a long time ago at this point over 56 years ago so <clears throat> so i kind of expected that, that steve Terrell might no longer be with trussell us trussell that, trussell that so but the site has stuff all the way up to uh the uh, new yorker article uh that uh guinevere turner uh, wrote about uh, her childhood, uh, which eventually led to, which was in 20, uh, 2019, which eventually led to her writing the book uh, three years later. She worked on the book for three years, um, so she said. Anyway, um, kind of a putting it all in a nutshell is uh, this article. Um, from Esquire magazine in February 1968, uh, which is right around the time that uh, Turner uh, was, you know, born, basically, and uh, her mother, uh, who um, was poor and in Boston, uh, ran across this newspaper called Avatar, which was this sort of, uh, you know. Uh, alternative underground newspaper but had a, a decidedly more a spiritual uh, bent because it was run by Lyman and his crowd um, and really uh, the site uh, the um, Trussell, 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 Steve Terrell Lyman site uh, tracks how the, the uh, battles that go on with the underground press with these people and uh, the uh, and KPF, well, one of the one of the uh, Pacifica stations in California, when they went out there, and you know the kind of thuggery that they were involved with. Um, but anyway, back to this Kit Carson uh, article called "God Is Back" from February 1968, and uh, he, he wraps it up at the end. It says. Uh, God's return is hardly unexpected. He was bound to come back, forced to return by two basic human appetites. First, the need to have a God, 
analyzed by Krishnamurti, himself chosen as a godchild years ago by the English theosophists, uh, until one day he got fed up and announced that he was not God, and after all, everyone should leave him alone. And uh, that we have God because we want to use him. Uh, we are out to exploit him. And we can't, we can't love, so we want God to be there to love us. Second, and more important, the need to be God, explained by Burton Russell, Bertrand Russell, himself tempted, it says. Uh, every man would like to be God. If it were possible, some few find it difficult to admit the impossibility, as in uh, Mr. Lyman, I guess. Therefore, the return of God is not remarkable. This is back to uh, Kit Carson's writing, L.M. Kit Carson's writing. Therefore, the return of God is not remarkable. What is remarkable and what has always been remarkable is that the man so hungry that he can do the trick, feed those who make him God at the same time they feed him, who, like Mel Lyman, picks up his phone to hear, Hello, God, and who say, like Mel Lyman, answers, speaking. So, my thoughts about, you know, I read a bunch of this stuff. There's a long article that he reprints from uh, Rolling Stone, uh, which is in late, uh, which was published in a couple of issues. Late um, 1971 and early 1972. And it, uh, that uh, uh, by David Felton. Felton. And he investigates these people, he hangs out with them, he sees uh, he, and recounts uh, uh, some of their thuggish behaviors and talks about the uh, principles uh, involved in, in this uh, little cultish movement. And uh, to me, it, a lot of it has uh, indications and earmarks uh, of, and my suspicion is that, that, that uh, it was kind of a, one of the results of, uh, of uh, the uh, CIA MK Ultra LSD experiments it, with uh, COINTELPRO that they used against the anti-war movement and the left and the new left. So, uh, I mean, you know, because he comes on the scene and he's talking about the hippies or this and that, and, you know, he comes out of the folk movement, but he doesn't go into the activist end of the folk music. He keeps it all very much, uh, you know, it's in the purity of the country type music, which is, you know, essentially conservative. Um, and the women that, you know, he, he gathers these women around, they're all in the long dresses and they're serving men. I mean, the, at the very end of uh, Gretchen's, uh, I mean, uh, Guinevere uh, Turner's book, there's a scene where he, she's, uh, you know, still young and, you know, has been longing to go back after being with her family for so long and does go back. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, this is a nice and this is a nice scene. But, you know, what happens is that uh, one of the men in the dinner, in the parties, whatever, uh, you know, dangles his empty wine glass in front of her, which is the indication that they all know, all the women know, that they are to grab it, go get their man wine. And she said, eh, nope, 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 not, not for me. So... Um, you know, it's very, uh, very rudimentary sexist. And so, you know, it gives a, a reading Terrell's site, Russell. a lot of the Trussell. articles. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. I read part of it and it's like now I just want to get away from this sh asshole. <laughs> you know, uh, there are a lot of pictures of him who's very rail skinny. He's get these beady eyes all the time, even back into the folk movement. 
uh, part and you know he's uh, and some interviews and he thinks he's so creative he has these people build uh, studios for him out uh, there's a one part where he's he builds this big theater studio uh, all tricked out with you know there's I guess uh, of the day multimedia abilities you know in the in the mid uh, 60s there and uh, you know then he changes his mind and said well they're not people aren't going to come to Martha's Vineyard to hear my thing so I'm going to use uh, television and and movies and things like that I kind of feel that the guy didn't have the uh, the guts to continue to go through with it for uh, uh, several years and uh, since he had uh, kind of indications of uh, kind of anorexia or something, he's getting skinnier and skinnier. Uh, even in the uh, Rolling Stone article, the David Felton article, it talks about how you know he was very, very thin, and uh, so I think he you know, essentially uh, you know uh, couldn't really produce, didn't have the energy to I mean, staying up all, all night long and sleeping all day long, put everybody on this weird, weird schedule. Um, I think he really didn't have the guts to go through with it. Ultimately, he finally saw that he really could not produce and didn't have the people around him to produce in the light of uh, you know, the media, the power of the media that was growing and growing. He could not be a player. He, he didn't have a, he didn't have the chops, you know, he could, the, the, uh, the populism of the folk music uh, was not going to carry him through in the, in the uh, rock decades of, of uh, you know, Led Zeppelin and uh, Jefferson Airplane and, uh, you know, the Beatles even and all, all that, you know, that sort of the folk music scene was, you know, generally was kind of pulverized by the big, the uh, rock and roll band and the, the big beat and the uh, electric, electric uh, effects that are available for, were available for guitar players that were making the, all these brand new sounds in that day that no one had ever heard before. and you know, were great and very interesting. So he didn't have any of that stuff. So, you know, as indicating with the tearing the theater down bit, uh, he, he, just, he just couldn't pull it off. And I think basically he kind of starved himself to death or whatever at age 40 in 1978 is when he uh, ended up dying and uh, you know, Ultimately, that's a good result. That's a happy ending for the rest of the people because, you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't uh, take them all with him, even though there's this 1975 episode which uh, uh, Guinevere Turner starts her book out with where they were all going, the world was going to end and they were going to go to Venus on the spaceship. Um, I'm glad he didn't decide. Well, we're all going to uh, we're all going to uh, kill ourselves uh, together now, or he all go somewhere and kill other people and then kill ourselves, or you know whatever. Like uh, you know uh, Jim Jones uh, and the other what the people that went to space. Can't think of them at the moment. Uh, the two the couple who uh, who made the uh, had everybody suicide uh, and then they were going to go to space so you know it could have turned out like that but he ended up just killing himself basically uh, or burning out or dying whatever at age 40 which kind of brought the thing whole the momentum of the whole thing kind of peter petering out and you know he didn't really build I don't think a lot of followers after that uh, you know the paper wasn't there anymore he couldn't you know pick up these, you know, people off the street like uh, uh, Bess, uh, Bess Turner or whatever her name is, Gwen, uh, uh, um, Guinevere's mom. And uh, so in a instead of a lot of big damage done, he just sort of died and uh, happy ending to spread the message, which is uh, the message, which is people need to wake up whatever and uh, people need to feel 
uh, a lot of the thuggish stuff that goes on with these guys, a couple of the main uh, people, uh, one of which I still has a website with a, a, a woman, um, presumably a wife or something now, you know, at whatever, 80 years old, where he's playing the guitar and they're sitting doing, you know, sort of a folky music. It's all fine, you know, he has this uh, skill of playing the guitar and doing the music for, you know, the past uh, 60 years, whatever, so, you know, he's good at it. But, uh, uh, so, you know, there's that guy. And then there's this other guy who uh, went to Harvard and uh, was part of, you know, study with Henry Kissinger and, you know, like calls, has all these connections which, um, you know, can really be a, a kind of a, a red flag or at least an orange flag or a caution flag a, a sign uh, that to somebody like me who's kind of looked into this stuff a little bit. Uh, that he, you know, he must have been the, the, um, the CIA operative. I mean, he's going around like beating up these people and, uh, you know, being a real, uh, a real thug. And so, uh, you know, he is one of the central guys in the Rolling Stone story that's, uh, you know, uh, harassing people uh, who, you know, want to escape or, or uh, are not in line with the, uh, with the, the uh, ideology of this uh, weird movement. So, yeah, so Mel Lyman, uh, you know, all his teeth are pulled out in his 30s because he eats too much candy. You know, what, what it's, what one of the women said or whatever, one of his, one of his women, you know, uh, as I said before, you know, it has, uh, it has the, the, these dudes that are using uh, the, the kind of, uh, um, the kind of uh, s sexual liberation, uh, free love aspects of the uh, 60s to, you know, pull their own crap. So uh, Steve Trussell's uh, really marvelous site uh, that has all this stuff about Mel Lyman. Uh, the last entry is in uh, 2019, and that includes... Guinevere Turner's New Yorker article on her childhood, which was the seed of the book that I've been talking about here. And um, also there's so many things that he collected along the way. He died uh, in what, 2000, two, 2020, uh, right around there. So it all stopped there, but uh, there's a statement at the beginning of the uh, page now that uh, when you go to it you can see that uh, someone else, uh, a friend of his, is uh, carrying on the page and it will, it will, he says it will, it will be up, that it won't have any changes. So it's too bad uh, he missed uh, Guinevere Turner's book and whatever is to follow, uh, which, you know, we hope will be plenty. A really interesting article about women um, that was uh, included in the site is called Mel and Charlie's Women, The Souring of Street Life by Ellen Hurst. This was in Boston after dark in uh, 1972, so, <clears throat> and it talks about the uh, Mirror at the End of the World, this book that uh, Mel Lyman uh, spewed out about his philosophy, and it quotes it, it uh, quotes, well, it talks about how women back then and probably now have a very hard time of it in, in uh, what is still a man's world. Um, even worse back then. Until 1974, women could not really get their own credit card. Uh, had to be in the name of a, of a man or their husband. Uh, it, uh, one law happened in 1963, and in 1974 it all got opened up. But uh, that, that was uh, recent in, in a lot of uh, uh, lifetimes of people who are around today, including myself. 
I mean, I was in my 20s in 1974. So all the women uh, around my same age would not be able to get credit cards unless they were co-signed by their parents or, or uh, someone like that. So, so women were really trapped in an economic system that was not uh, welcoming, that was built for men, and uh, it put, forced them into lives with men. And here we have uh, um, Bess Turner, uh, Guinevere Turner's mother, uh, becoming pregnant in Boston, or uh, finds herself in Boston when she's pregnant and uh, has nowhere to go, picks up the newspaper Avatar and reads about uh, Avatar and, these, uh, and the Lyman family and all that stuff and uh, basically signs up There's some, some place to go, some place to be taken care of. Um, so, it, it, when we look at people and we look at cults and we go, how, how could you possibly do this? You know, how could you, how could you, how could you join something so, so ridiculous, so horrible? Even the Manson family, um, and uh, you know, uh, um, Keith Raniere's outfit. Well, it doesn't appear that horrible, and sometimes people are very vulnerable and uh, basically forced by circumstances into these things. So, uh, in the um, article by Ellen Hurst, she starts out, uh, this isn't a book review. It's my response as a woman to reading all the gossip about Charles Manson and Mel Lyman. And more than that, a response to the whole hippie freak culture and the place in it for of women in it. I mean, it may be a total drag to spend your life at a dishwasher, washing machine, supermarket, etc. And of course, we, we know that. On the other hand, it's not exactly a groove to hustle on the street bake bread for your hippie farmer, serve God incarnate, commit murders in the name of few options. So she quotes Mel Lyman's uh, attitude toward women, which is particularly, uh, you can judge for yourself. If a woman really is a woman, and not just an old girl, then everything she does is for her man, and her only satisfaction is in making her man a greater man. She is his quiet conscience. She is his home. She is his inspiration. And she is his living proof that his life, his labors, are worthwhile. A woman who seeks to satisfy herself is the loneliest being in God's creation. A woman who seeks to surpass her man is only leaving herself behind. A man can only look ahead. He must have somewhere to look from. A woman can only look at her man. Mel Lyman, the Avatar, with uh, you know get a, get a lot of women, uh, and I'm you know where you know they go from man to man, but I'm I don't suppose they get to make the choice. The man gets tired of them or whatever, and uh, then uh, maybe even as assigned them to uh, yeah. There, there's you know in, in the Turner's book, there's like uh, at at one point uh, you know he's. He's, uh, he's taking on a 13-year-old wife. So, you know, it, it, it's just kind of a horror show. And, and, and you know, it's, it seems like um, Lyman kind of self-destructed in a way. Uh, you know, he might have had a, a little bit of conscience or, uh, you know, he's building all this stuff where he's going to be this big creative guy and he's going to make all these movies and the music and so forth, you know, while the culture is basically passing him by. He's not, you know, 
He's very anti-hippie, even though he's using LSD, giving LSD to people and filming them. I'm like giving 1,500 mics of LSD to people and then filming their experience. Also, it, uh, in, the, in the Rolling Stone article, it talks about him doing really kind of mind control stuff where he gives people a lot of LSD, plays noisy music, scares them, uh, all this stuff. It's like Abu Ghraib or something, you know? It's, it's, like, uh, it's like hardcore uh, captured rendition of this it's CIA stuff. So he, uh, you know, uh, pulverizes them off the stuff, all this really scary stuff, while they're really under a lot of LSD. And then he, you know, uh, brings them back, uh, you know, gives them this sort of uh, psychedelic boot camp experience where he brainwashes them into his uh, realm. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that go on, that's going on in, in, in this. And... Uh, you know, it's it's just uh, it's disgusting, and the guy was creepy, and uh, I'm glad that uh, Turner got away from him. And I and I I, I wonder, you know, as uh, she said on, uh, or maybe Rachel Bernstein said on uh, Indoctrination, where I first heard about this book, uh, Turner's book that maybe, you know, now more of the people who were involved with this uh, movement, this uh, uh, Lyman experience will come out and start talking more about what went on with them and, uh, you know, the uh, rape by these men and uh, everything else. So, uh, so yeah, the Trussell, Steve like Trussell. Duncan Trussell, like really Duncan good. Trussell, uh, the famous comedian, yeah, psychedelic all, guy. All covers of all these uh, Avatar uh, papers that they put out in uh, Boston. You know, that's kind of uh, all I want to do with these people. I don't. I'm not interested in in exploring it all that much further. I, I uh, you know, I might read a little bit more about it, but I did want to get back with this little appendix to it in case anybody didn't really care uh, and wanted to look further into uh, this particular cult because it, it is kind of interesting because it does have, you know, these related tentacles uh, to these other things that, you know, involve, you know, as I said, MK Ultra and COINTELPRO and uh, you know this kind of uh, this kind of turning away from even even the folk world of uh, like you know Phil Oaks went on into like really great uh, kind of music that uh, you know explored himself, but also you know was always kind of very activist, always anti anti war. You know they don't even make any statements about anti Vietnam. Uh, it's all just this feeling and da 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 and spiritual stuff and, and God. Uh, it's uh, a lot of hooey as far as I'm concerned. And it's so sad that uh, so much of, uh, you know, activism that could, that could elevate our society and bring us... Uh, maybe an equi more equitable uh, economic system uh, devolves, devolves into a lot of these kind of things with the spiritual thing or even, you know, looking to, into yourself a whole lot and, and uh, you know, kind of, it's all within you. Uh, you know, this, this, this kind of stuff that, that uh, distracts and uh, diverges people away from any kind of activism, any kind of uh, kind of change that brings us to the point we are now, with the rich, uh, super, super, super rich, and uh, the military uh, state that we live in, uh, dominating, uh, uh, causing more and more wars to uh, continue their hegemony. So. Uh, I think that's all I need to say about Mel Lyman. I'm going to actually, uh, I, I, uh, on offshoot of this, I'm going to, he also liked uh, Manson. He had a, a picture of Manson uh, back then when all this was going down. They had a picture of Manson up in their office or something. 
So, you know, it's like, okay, Manson is sort of the, sort of the Antichrist and I'm the Christ, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, uh, it's all just twisted and, and uh, messed up and I don't like it. I have more nonfiction to read. I, I really would like to get to some fiction, which is kind of more more my thing in a way, but really I'm on this kick of uh, nonfiction and kind of getting a lot out of it. So I, uh, if you want to ride along with me, please do. Uh, if you don't, well, do something else. <laughs> Thank you for watching.